Cheers everybody, Maine Brew Guy. Um, this video today is uh, basically me. Hey everybody, Maine Brew Guy. Uh, this video today is something I've never done, a uh, video on how to make wine. Uh, it's using a wine kit though, it's, so it's very basic. And uh, so let's go get started. You have star sand, you have an airlock, you have a specific gravity device, and um, also you can use a reflectometer as well. And a bottling bucket and a wine kit. This one is a Merlot. Supposedly it's on sale, but that thought was pretty pricey. <laughs> yeah, it makes over five gallons. I'm gonna actually put this one in an oak barrel. So we'll see that coming up. All right, so the kit contains the grape juice, which is pretty much the biggest part of this whole kit. Uh, and, and this Merlot kit, and I've made Merlots before that do not have this portion here. This is basically the grape skins. The skins are gonna be uh, poured into this muslin bag. All right, so uh, the next thing it contains is potassium uh, metabisulfate, potassium sorbate, and bentonite. Also uh, a lab and uh, yeast, EC1118, a shot there, there we go. And then a clarifying agent, and medium oak chips for the primary and an instruction kit. Like anything else we do, we sanitize and we clean and sanitize some more. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right now. What I like to do is use paper towels instead of a sponge because the sponges can have a lot of fungus and all other kinds of things on them. So I use a paper towel and just kind of work it around the bucket a little bit. Get the gross uh, product off of there before I sanitize. So uh, <clears throat> I'll just run that, let that pour out through there. It's very warm water right now and it's just for cleaning. The lid should be fairly clean and it is because I rarely use it. For the lid for anything other than making wine. So. so the next part is to go ahead and add some star sand. So we're going to reuse the star sand. I'm just going to get it started in the bucket and then I'm going to place it uh, in the sink for the spoon and anything else that's going into the bottling bucket or fermentation bucket in this case. So with the lid, I just kind of wash it in there like this. Pretty clean the sink very well and rinsed it extremely well. So I'll let that pour through a little bit through the spigot like that. I actually sanitize the spigot. Since uh, the sink is going to be a larger volume, I'm going to double up on the star sand. So there's a little bit more star sand in the sink. And now I'll dump this in the sink. Don't fear the foam. Put the lid on there. Turn the. I turn this one sideways so it can, so it can sit flat on the counter. All right. So now I'll continue finishing filling the sink so I have a uh, clean sanitizing area for anything that goes into the wine, like scissors, spoons, um, hydrometer, etc. Okay, so the sink is now full of a star sand sanitizing agent, the muslin bag. It's gonna go in the star sand, sanitize the, the bag itself. So that's gonna go in there. First part is we're gonna add two gallons of hot water. And the nice thing about the bottling bucket is you have the graduated um, scale on the side there and it's very helpful. Let's get that all the way out. two gallons. 
So this is uh, package number two, and this kit is package number two, and that is the bentonite. And it kind of does look like clay when you pour it in there. So sprinkle it, uh, just don't dump it because it does clump. And in, in my star sand, I do have the, the spoon that I needed. The bentonite is extremely negatively charged and it's going to attach itself to all the positively charged byproducts to help clarify the wine. This is the first stage of clarification. So that's what it looks like, kind of grayish looking. Well, the next trick here is to add the juice itself. Okay, so let's get the scissors. Sanitize the scissors. cap off but today I cut the corner and I think that actually is easier. There we go. Cap off. So I've cut the corner. That was the important thing I probably should have mentioned. I cut the corner up here near this end because if you cut it at this end it'd be very hard to fill it with water again. So we're not going to fill it with a lot of water. Uh, because it's gonna, you'll end up putting too much water back in, in the bottling bucket, and then you'll end up with a really thin wine. If you add too much water, you're kind of screwed. If you haven't added enough, that's easy to fix. And you know, there's a little bit in there. All right, and then just pour that out. while we prep the rest of this. I'll wrap this around here like that. So same, same scenario as the, the other bag. The reason why I've got this bag is not to strain the skins. Um, the skins are actually going to go in the in the uh, bottom bucket, but I'm going to tie the top. Oh wow, these grapes smell good. The grape skins smell fantastic. Careful. Okay, that seems to work pretty good. So there we go. There's the remaining amount. These are the last skins for the. I don't want you tying this bag too tight because I want the skins to be able to work, the, work itself through the, um, you know, the, the fermentation process. So I'm going to tie this high. So there's juice in here as well, and I'm going to reuse that as, and pour that in here. I'm going to use it to pour it in here along with the bag. So the bag sinks right to the bottom. it on. I just dumped it in the star sand once again. And now we're at about four and a half gallons. So that's what I'm looking at right now. It smells fantastic. You don't have one of these. That sucks. I'm not sure it's coming out really cold, which it is. And I'm going to fill it. So this, this bottom ridge here is the same lip or ridge that's on the inside of the bottling bucket. Uh, the star sand. I'm just going to start circling the Alright, back to the gravity read. Out of the star sand. So the kit does actually states, I didn't even look, so I know 1080 is usually in the range of a Merlot, but I, that's actually the low end. So they, they want you to be between 1080 and 1.10. 1 so I brought it to the bottom of here, and I'm at 1090, it's like 
1094 or maybe 1093 the bubbles so I'm right in the middle of the range so I feel comfortable leaving it right where it is now if you end up with a, a Merlot that's a little thin or you end up a little thin you know don't throw it out you're just gonna end up with a wine that just feels like it's weak it just tastes like it's weak how do I know I've done it my first winemaking kit, they told me to go right to the bottom of this, this, and I went right to the bottom of the this ridge, and then checked it, and it was already too thin. Um, so once that happens, it's a done deal. So don't just arbitrarily go to the bottom line or go to where it says six gallons, because you may not end up there. Okay, the well, last item here is the oak chips. Cut the bag, sprinkle those in there. Uh, Merlots are pretty oaky. Uh, my experiment really is going to end up being in a oak barrel for another eight, another month of aging, and then the rest is going to end up in a carboy. So with the yeast, do not stir in the yeast. Just sprinkle it over the top and let it go. Put a airlock on a regular airlock like this. Save the rest of the items because you'll need them for the, the next steps in our... Okay, that's it for now. We'll see you in uh, 10 days. All right. So, it has completed on the primary. We're going to go ahead and open that up. We're going to rack it to secondary. There is my star sand, my siphon. Star same, of course. Um, hydrometer. Uh, whatever I get out of the hydrometer is going in the glass. And my thief, of course, a beer. And the next carboy. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and take a look uh, on this one and any of the ones that you use the skins. And uh, this one had the grape skins. And we're going to take the bag out. We're going to gently squeeze it, but we're not going to wring it out. Um, so, possibly going to lose a little bit of volume there, but that's okay. So first thing, I'm going to thief some out. the skins. Pretty good. I'm not going to put that back in because frankly, I want to pour it in the glass and see how, <clears throat> how it tastes. And star Sam, I grab the bag like right on the top. And we're going to leave a lot of yeast sediment behind, uh, the oak chips. It's going to spend another 14 days in here, just finishing up whatever it's going to finish up. I don't think that there's anything left. I'm pretty sure it's all fermented out. And then we're going to rack it to tertiary, and that's when we're going to degas it and start clarifying it. So you'll see that on the next video. Oak barrel. Got the water inside of it now. I rinsed it really good, and now the water's in there, and it's uh, been in there for the last three days, and it's completely sealed. Uh, so I got a good one. It's not leaking. Okay, this is secondary. Just to show you, wine is like beer. It does settle out. 
and that is the sediment in the secondary. So we'll transfer that. All right, people. <laughs> Off from work. Probably like every other schlep. Going to transfer the wine, Merlot, to tertiary. And this is what you need for this part of the process. We all have a drill, battery operated drill. We use it for our grinding grains. If you don't, they're fairly cheap. Kills the yeast, helps stabilize the wine over time. Sort of like a preservative, okay? So the one that it comes with is really only good for about six months. So I recommend getting some more potassium metabisulfate. And we're gonna add a little bit more to let the wine age even longer without going bad. Um, and then of course the fining agent, star sand, and a siphon, and another carboy. So we'll start that process next, after I get a beer. Okay, now the scene is complete. Basically about 125 mils of water. There's the two packets, my additional amount. Get a measuring. So I'll just let this dissolve. I'm gonna have to stir it a few times over the course of uh, transferring the wine over. So don't try to kill yourself getting it all to dissolve. All right, so let's move on. Well, no problem. I end up still making a mess anyway. There. And here we go. The next step is we're going to degas it. So we're going to put in that mixture of potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfate. One's to kill the yeast, the other is for preservative. And then we're going to use the degassing wand which is this, so you, we're gonna hook this to the drill, and when it rotates, these little paddles will spread out. Okay, so we finished transferring. Left behind a fair amount of fine uh, sediment, a mixture of yeast, I'm sure, and uh, particulate from the wine. So this didn't dissolve all that well, but that's okay. Clarifying agent, scissors. Just gonna cut the corner. The gassing wand. <laughs> this is called degassing. Now initially some of that foam was from the star sand, but you'll start to see you'll start to see some finer bubbles start to come up. So these finer bubbles are the ax this is actually right there on the edge is the CO2 being forced out of the wine. The second thing we're doing, of course, is we're mixing up really good the um, metabisulfate and potassium sorbate. So you'll see that same scenario. You can see these white streams coming up. You see how that's foaming, continues to foam. That again is CO2 coming out of the, being forced out of the, of the wine. It's a little better on the sides, how that's coming up. 
that's gas that's being forced out of the wine. As, well, this is the tertiary. So the primary was 10 to 12 days. The, the secondary was two weeks and the tertiary is another seven days. Hey guys, so we are in the bottling phase. So this has been in the barrel for about almost four weeks, like three and a half weeks. Very clear. We use the clarifying agent. Good clarity. Oh my God. So right now I have in my um, my Home Depot bucket down here, I have the corks just kind of floating in the water um, with star sand. I have my bottle submersed in here. And um, I'm just gonna bottle right off of the oak barrel. So <clears throat> basically it's very simple. Uh, it goes rather quickly on, on bottling day for wine. Uh, optional if you want to put the sleeves, the neck sleeves on. I'm not sure what, the, what they actually call them. Uh, they call them wine condoms. <clears throat> anyway, I'm just, I've already cleaned the spigot and uh, I'm just gonna fill these bottles right from the barrel. All right, the rule of thumb is to put the wine at about this far down in the neck. You want about an inch, an inch and a half gap between the cork and the top of the wine. So, I wasn't quick enough on the drawer, so I just get a little bit more in my glass. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. That's about where you want that. Okay. It's very simply, I don't know if you can see this. Let me adjust this. Portuguese floor corkers. This base is spring-loaded and then you can either hold it down or push it down with the bottle and then the bottle is locked into place. It can't go anywhere unless you really physically manhandle it. And the wet corks go in a lot easier. Just drop that down in there. Make sure the depth is set here, which I already checked earlier. And you just press. It kind of has a constricting mechanism here with a Teflon sleeve and then this just pushes it down through. Voilà.